Hi, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this simple newsletter in Word. So this is the original that I've designed, and I'm going to show you how to create each element except for this element here. This is a logo, so this will be your own logo if you want to put that there, or you can put an image there, it's completely up to you. So the first thing we're going to do is start with the text down here and this is just normal written text in Word, there's no text boxes or anything like that to allow each column to be typed and flow into each other. Previously I've done this with text boxes but unfortunately with text boxes each individual one does not flow into the next one. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to steal this text because you don't want to watch me typing all this out. So I'm just going to copy that, let's go to our normal default document. This is just a regular document I've just opened up and I'm going to just press return. My cursor's at the top here, just press return and then I'm just going to paste command or control V just to paste that text in. You can see it's not in columns, I'll show you how to do that. So put your cursor back at the top here and what we're going to do is we're going to push all of this down so it's at the bottom and then we've got the rest of the area at the top here to insert the rest of the details. So I'm going to pop that down there and as you can see if I press return again it knocks onto the next page which means I've got quite a large margin here and I want to utilize that space so I'm just going to go over to my rulers. If you can't see your rulers go to view and then just make sure rulers are checked. Hover your cursor between the white and grey section just between that line there. Click and then you can just drag down and that will just decrease your margins at the bottom and allow you just to move that text down a little bit more so you don't create that next page. Then select this text, sorry, go to layout, go to columns, click on the drop down and select three. Now you can select two, it's up to you. I'm just going to select three. And as you can see, that's knocked that onto the next page. So if that does that, just place your cursor above the text and press the delete key. Just press that a few times and then it will get rid of that next page. So what I am going to do also is just pull this up a little bit. I'm going to put an image here. Now this will mess up these columns, but I'll tell you how to correct them. So just go to insert, go to pictures, click on the drop down. You can select a picture from file if there's one off your computer you want to use. But I'm going to select stock images and use one of the photos that come with your software. And in here I'm just going to type people. And then I'm just going to scroll and look for my image. Here we are, just click on that one and then just click insert. Now, as you can see, when an image is inserted into words, everything goes a bit crazy. But don't worry, just select the image, go to picture format, go to wrap text, click on the drop down and select in front of text. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just crop this image. So select it, go to picture format, select crop. Once I've selected crop, you can see all these little black markers around the outside. Just grab those black markers with your cursor and then just crop the image to where you want it. I want to, this to fit generally with the column that I've got, so it wants to be quite narrow. And then we'll just take off what we don't need there, a little bit here. And then just press enter. And then we can just reduce the size of that just to fit with our columns here. So the next thing I'm going to do is just change the wrapping on this image. So select it, go to picture format, go to wrap text, and now we want the text to go to the top and bottom. You can choose type if you want to. In fact, let's choose type and see what that does with Word. There we go. So let's select type, and what you can see now is the text will actually wrap around that image. It doesn't like me at the moment because I'm forcing it to do something it doesn't want to do. We're very close to the edge of the page, that's why. Then you can just use your arrow keys to move that image if you want to left and right and just line that up and then you can make that bigger or smaller. I'm just going to select all the text again to justify it. That's this element here, justify text. That will mean it's all lined up to the margins. You don't have to choose that option. Now to put the heading in, because I like to be quite flexible with my headings, I'm going to put it in a text box. So go to insert, text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box. Click and drag out a text box, doesn't matter how big or small it is because we can adjust it. I'm just going to type in my heading, 
And then if I deselect it, you can see we've got this black border and we've also got a white background. You see that white background there. I'm going to get rid of both of those. So go to Shape Format, Shape Outline, No Outline, Shape Fill, No Fill. Now, if you don't see Shape Format, it's because you haven't selected your text box. Now I'm going to go up to the Home tab. Now, because my cursor is not in my text box, I can make adjustments to this without having to select it. So go to the Home tab. I'm going to choose this Increase Font Size tool here. Just click on it until I'm happy with the size of my heading. Roughly about there. I'm going to choose Bold and I'm also going to change the font to Arial. Perfect. And now I can just reduce the size of this text box and I can put this heading wherever I like. So if I want to put it really close, I can. If I want to put it further apart and I can move it along if I want to. It just gives me that extra flexibility that if I was just to normally type it, I can't choose where that heading will go necessarily because Word will choose for me. So then I'll just use my arrow keys to move that over and see how that looks. Perfect. So let's just go back to the original. So we've done this part here and now we'll concentrate on putting the photo in the top and this box at the top here too. So go to insert, picture, and again, we go down to stock images. We've already got them on the side here. Again, I would type in people because I want some people at the top. And then all I need to do is to look for my image. Here's my image. Just click on it and click insert. Again, make sure it's selected. Go to picture format, wrap text, click on the drop down and select in front of text. Now we can just move that up. And again, we can crop this image. So we've just got that little slither across the top select it, picture format, crop, and then we'll just crop this to taste, maybe back there, and then just hit crop or the enter key. And now I'm just going to spread that out across my page. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is insert that little box here with the text in. So go to insert, shapes, and then select the square or the rectangle there and then just click and drag out that rectangle. Now again, when we enter shapes, we've got a borderline and we've got a fill color. So to change those, just select it, go to shape format. On the shape outline, I'm gonna select no outline. Now for your fill color, you can select any color you like, but you can see that I've tried to use a consistency of colors. If you use lots and lots of colors for your newsletter, it can look a little bit busy. So you can see I've got these yellowy orange tones here. And again, down for this picture here, those yellowy orange tones. So if you can find images that have a similar color tone, then we can match them for the rest of the graphics. And the way in which we do that for the fill color is select the drop down, go to more fill colors, your color wheel will appear and then you can go to this little eyedropper tool here. Then you can just hover anywhere over your yellow tones and select a color of choice and then simply click OK. And you know that that color there will tie in with the colors in your image. We want to change the transparency of this square. So we're going to select it, shape format and go all the way over to format pane. When you do that, you'll have additional formatting menus that appear, particularly this format shape one. Go down to the bucket icon. And again, we've got fill, which is the fill color. Click on the drop down, And we've also got line, which is the border line. And the menus that we used before, these were just quick menus. And here you just have a little bit more control. So for the fill, we've got the solid color, but we want to change its transparency. So just use this slider, move it to the right. And as you can see, that's allowing the picture to shine through a little bit. And again, that's personal taste about how much you want that to happen. Now to insert my title, I'm going to steal this text box because we've taken the background and the border out. I'm going to use this one. So I'm going to select it, hold down my Alt or Option key, click and drag, and that will copy me a new heading. Double click inside, select all by com command or control A, go to the home tab, and I'm just going to use the decrease font size tool until I'm happy with the si size of my heading. Maybe go up one, there we go. Now you can put the heading to the side or the middle. If you want to put it to the middle, make sure it's perfectly aligned. 
select the text box, hold down the command or control key and select the yellow box as well. Go to shape format, go to align, click on the drop down and select align to center. Then you can see it will perfectly align it to the center. Again, I'm going to steal a text box again. We can use this one. So select it, hold down the alt or option key on your keyboard, click and drag. And then all we need to do is borrow some text or type your text in. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to grab some text from here. So I'm going to select this text here. I'm going to copy it, command or control C, go back up to my text box, double click inside, select this text, command or control V to paste that text in. And then we can change it, change the size of it if we want to. Just deselect, see how that looks. And then you can move it around. You can pop it in the middle if you want to. What I might do is just add a little bit more text. Copy, double click inside. And paste that text in. There we go. Again, I'm going to make sure it's in the center. So select this text box. Command or control key, hold that down, click on the yellow box, shape format, align, align to center. And it will align that text up perfectly for you. We're just going to move this heading down a little bit because it just looks a bit too close to the top. Move that text up a bit, just using my arrow keys. So now we're going to put the graphics boxes in. So I'm going to steal this box here. So again, select it, hold down my alt or option key, click and drag. Nope, that's the wrong one. Go back, Command or Control Z to go back. Okay, now select the yellow box, Alt or Option, click and drag, there we go. And then once I've got that selected, I'm gonna whiz back over to my tools over here and then just pull that transparency to the left to make sure it's at zero. Then I'm just gonna move this box so that it suits me. There we go, let's just go back to the original, see how that fits, that's quite deep. So we'll go right down to about here. Okay, and then again, Alt or Option, click out a box, that's for this side, click out another box, that's for the bottom, and click out another box, and that's for this section here. So let's just move this one over, we'll come back to that one. Move this one down, and we just need to make that a bit shallower move that over to the side and with this one because these are all the same color and they overlap it doesn't really matter and then just deselect and then I think that needs to move over just slightly to the right moving it with my arrow keys just so that they're equal the distance away from the edge is equal there and also there this one we need to change the color, so I'm going to select it, go to Shape Fill, go to More Fill Colors. This color's already been selected, but what we can do is we can choose that tone or hue of color, and we can just use this slider just to make it darker. So it's on the same color spectrum, but we can just make that darker as a little bit of a contrast. Then just click OK, and you just get that darker color. And we'll pull that out to the side, and to make sure that these are two perfectly aligned graphics, let's just pull that over to the right. Let's just do that with my arrow keys. To make sure these are two perfectly aligned graphics, select this one, hold down the command or control key, select this one, go to shape format, align, and then you can select align to top. That will ensure they're all perfectly lined up along that top. So the heading is a little bit too close. I'm gonna move all this text up a bit because what I am going to do is use the headers and footers to put in some words. This all will need adjusting. It's never perfect, so you will need to just adjust things. So we'll just pull that down. There we go. And we're just going to pop a logo in here. So go to Insert, Picture, and this time I'm going to select Picture from File. And for this one, I'm going to select this logo here and click Insert. Again, it's made everything go crazy. Don't panic. Select it, Picture Format, Wrap Text, In Front of Text and just pull that up, reduce the size. Now obviously you don't want to pull and push your logo, but you can just make it fit. If your logo is different, a different dimension, let's say it's a very long one, you can adjust this box, move this box out like that to fit your logo, or you can move it to a square, it's up to you. But for the purposes of this demonstration and to make it fit, 
I'll just pop it there. I can make sure this is aligned to the center between the top and bottom here. So I can select that, hold down the Alt or Option key and select the outer square. Go to Picture Format, Align, and we can go to Align to Middle, which means you can see these squares are perfectly lined up there. But that does mean your logo has to be in the center of this box. Trouble is, my logo isn't. You can see there's a large gap at the bottom and there's no gap at the top. So if I deselect it, you can see that it's there's a bigger gap at the bottom here than there is at the top. So I'm just going to have to move it down using my arrow keys. There we go. Yep, that works for me. And in here, we're going to put the text, some bullet points and a header. So again, I'm going to steal a heading, select it, Alt or Option key, click and drag and then select this text. Obviously, this will be your own text. In fact, let's go and steal the text from here because we know exactly how much we've got. So in here, I'll show you how to put the bullet points in. I'm just going to steal this text. Command and Control C to copy it. I'm going to steal this text box because I don't want to have to uh, sort out the text box again. I don't want to have to take the borders and everything else out. So double click inside, select all, and then Command and Control V to paste my text. Now to do bullet points, I'm just going to de delete my bullet point. There we go. That's just bog standard text in there. You pop your text in. You'll notice this text is slightly smaller because I've reduced the size of it. And the way you do that, select it, go to the Home tab. And again, you can use the font sizes here or you can use these two icons here, which is increase and decrease font size. If you want bullet points, select the text, go to the Home tab and then go along and you can select the bullet points here. You can click on the drop down and you can tell Word which one you'd like to select. So I'm going to select this one and you can see that bullet point has been entered into the box. Now the great thing is there's no margins here so you can literally move this any way you want to. So if you wanted to move it over or keep it over here it's completely up to you. And again I'm just going to copy and paste this just for the demonstration. I'm going to put my cursor down here there we go. And I just need to increase the space there. You can see I've got a bullet point there that's been created as I hit the return key. So just press the delete key and it'll get rid of it for you. And again, we can place these anywhere. Let's just move that round, deselect it. That needs to go up a little bit. So using my arrow key to go up. And then again, the heading. Try line that heading up with those bullet points. Try if you can to make sure everything is lined up with something else. So you can make sure the heading is lined up with the logo. But in this case, there's too much to get into this box. But my H is lined up with these bullet points. The heading here is lined up with the margins of my text. Again here, these are both centered, so you don't have to do that. But if you wanted to, you could align this section here with the heading. Perfect. So once you've got everything in, you might want to put in a little header or footer. So go to insert footer, click on the drop down, just select edit footer. And then in here, I can put my issue number and then a space and then a small line. Don't worry, I know I've covered this up, but I'll sort it out in a second. And then we put the date and then we can just put your company. Okay. Now you can see I can't see it and I want to keep this graphic at the bottom. So I'm going to adjust the margin of the footer. So make sure you're still in the footers. Go over to the rulers. You can see my arrow changes. Click and pull that up and it will pull that footer up for you. For me, the font is a bit too big, so I'm going to select it all, go to the Home tab, just select the Decrease Font Size tool. There we go. And then to come out of the headers and footers, just double click into the main area of your document. And you can see now that's all perfectly lined up. So once you're happy with that, you can save it as a template if you want to. In order to do that, you go to File, Save as Template, Make sure you're in the templates file here. That's really important. And also the file format is Microsoft Word template. Call it what you want to and then just hit save. That means that when you open Word, your template will be in the software and then you can use this over and over again. And it means you don't have to reformat it because when you come to save it, Word will tell you to save it as a completely different document, saving the original. You can also save it as a PDF and you can send that off to be printed 
or you can use that PDF to use as part of an email. If you want the template for this, then you can go along to my Patreon site, have a look at that. There are some downloads there and you can have a look at the options. But if this has helped you today, please like and subscribe and have a great day.